Welcome to iRise Conversations with Joan. My name is Joan Wosu and I'm the award-winning author of the book, I Rise, The 10 Secrets to Getting Up When Life Knocks You Down. So for centuries, women were made to feel like subhumans, like we were beneath men. This conditioning has led to many, many mental models controlling us, we women, and in some cases, really stopping us from reaching our highest potential. The truth is women are more powerful than we know. And we hold a lot of power within us to not just transform our immediate environment, but to transform the world as a whole. So I grew up with a lot of these limiting beliefs, this conditioning of what women can do, what women cannot do, women can be seen, not heard. Right. And that controlled my life for a very long time. But I had to break through that. I had to rewrite the narrative and really take charge and control my life. And as a woman, being able to discover your true power that's already within you and show up as you were designed to be is right. a gift that will propel you to the greatest heights. My guest today is a champion in that field, really inspiring and empowering women to be all that they can be. So my guest today is Kimberly Faith. She's had the privilege to train and coach over 40,000 leaders from Fortune 500 companies, including Amazon, American Airlines, BMW, Boeing, Capgemini, GE, Google, Kellogg, Lockheed Martin, Microsoft, Nielsen. Oh my God, just to name a few. And she's also worked on licensing deals with Warner Brothers, Disney, and MGM. She has led executive workshops in the US, in Canada, where I am, in Dubai, France, Italy, Singapore, all over the world. Her business journey has taken her across the globe to almost every state in the US, to small towns, big cities, coast to coast, and even included a walk down the red carpet at a Hollywood premiere of the Harry Potter movie, Order of the Phoenix. Kim has published an award-winning, amazing book, which I love, geared towards empowering women, titled Your Lion Inside, Discover the Power Within. She is all, she's on a quest to inspire women around the world that we each have far more power than we think we do. Welcome to the show, Kim. I am thrilled to be here. I am thrilled to be here. Listen, with a rock star like you already with so much light emanating, I am in good company, dear. Good company. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so I know I gave a brief intro, if you can call it brief, a brief intro about you, but how would you describe yourself in your own words? Um, you know, what's funny is I actually um, do use that kind of one-liner that has been my privilege to train or coach over 40,000 leaders from 33 countries spanning 24 industries. Isn't that crazy? Um, uh, that just shows you how seasoned I am. And it was something that I actually sat down to add up. And I've been encouraging other women to do the same thing because many of us have far more experience than we've given ourselves credit for. So, but mostly I'm a passionate human being. That's what I want you to know. A that, passionate that, human being. That's sure. amazing. So I'm sure you guys can tell already from the first minute she started to speak, start taking notes. And that is true, Kim. If you ask me to summarize my life in a sentence, I couldn't, but you were clearly able to articulate it over 40,000, 33 countries because those numbers pop. And as women, we, we it's so difficult. <laughs> You know what, Joan, we have not been taught to speak like that. I call those our impact numbers because we tend to speak in softer language, which is a beautiful thing. And what I work with women is to speak and use that and add in the impact numbers because impact numbers speak volumes to the other half of the population. Wow. And, um, and also it's a reminder for ourselves that when we start adding it up, we're like, really? Did I, did I do all that? And we need that reminder. And that's when I, when I encourage women to start stepping in that power. I'm, I'm like, take a look, sister, at what, what you've done here. I want you to see it in black and white. Um, because that's the conversation I'm having all the time. Amazing. The time. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Kim. So I did read um, Your Lion Inside, an amazing book. Um, I actually ran like a little quiz for my friends. One person gets to win a copy, someone who's really ready to step forward. And everyone was like, I want it, I want it, I want it. It was really, really a fabulous book. So I want to start off asking about mental models. Sure. Because this is something that's really holding a lot of women, but everybody in general, holding a lot of people back. What are some of the common men mental, first of all, what is a mental model? And then sure. what are some of the common ones? 
So what a mental model is, it's the lens through which we see the world. Um, you know, my background was in something called systems thinking. It was, it was popular, made back in the 90s with Dr. Peter Singe, and it was learning about the belief systems that we have. And belief systems can be so deeply ingrained that we don't even see them, just like we don't even see when we have glasses on. I mean, so how many of us, you know, have on a set of glasses and we can't even remember, right? But mental models are just like this. They're the lenses through which we see the world. And they're not good or bad, Joan. What's dangerous about them is when we don't realize that we have them on. That's what's dangerous. And what happens with so many of us as women is we have piled on so many glasses. I mean, like I could have 10 pair on, right? Pile after pile after pile, and that becomes quite cumbersome. And what, when I first was working, you know, with women, it was, I was being invited to speak to different groups. And I started to notice this undercurrent of different belief systems. And I remember writing them down I'm um, having lived them myself, mind you. So I, I do want us to talk about that because I'm not talking about anything that I have not lived, cried, tears, blood, sweat, that I've been there myself because I don't think I could be here, Joan, if I had not already lived that myself. But when I started mapping out what was happening with women, I went, this is happening with women all over the world? Wait a minute, there, there's no way surely we were farther than this, right? And I spent two years trying to disprove what I had discovered. And, um, and sure enough, it was seven belief systems that kept showing up no matter where we were in the world over and over and over again. Wow. Yes. I, I, you know, like I, I said during the introduction, I grew up with this, th these mental models, these belief systems. And I like what you said about them not necessarily being uh, good or bad it's about you being aware because sure. some of them, your mental models are responsible for where you are today so another thing so i just so i know you mentioned well, seven uh, uh, well and i did and i just want to tie back to that joan because you know when you think back to what we learned from our moms and our grandmothers the things that we learn often aren't even spoken out loud they simply are, are the expectations so i mean i love that little old story about the pot roast where, you know, a, a woman saw her mother, um, you know, uh, cook the pot roast and, and the husband asked, why do you cut the ends off the pot roast? And she says, I don't know, my mom always did, right? And so she goes back and she asked the, you know, asked the, the grandmother, and think, you know, I, I, I don't know, I, my mother always did. And they went back to the great grandmother and they actually asked her why she cut off the ends of a pot roast, which now three generations of people were doing. And the great grandmother said, because my pan was too small. <laughs> I mean, truly. And yeah. so there wasn't an official conversation yeah. um, there. You know, we all had good big pots by that time, but we simply passed it along and passed it along and passed it along. And Joan, when you think about our parents, so you're, you're much younger than I am, but when we think about the generations of parents, they did not have access to many of the things that we do now. True. They didn't have access to many things that we learn on the internet. They didn't have access to counseling, mental health. I mean, there simply wasn't as much available to them to stop the generational bondage that many of us found ourselves in. Absolutely. So, you know, like, I, I love that story that you just gave, because a lot of times we're truly not aware. So it's about learning yes. to be aware of your mental models before they ruin you or they yes. take control of your life. Okay. That's exactly right. And that's what I realized is that, you know, there were a few things that were tap dancing on our, on our, on our awareness, but most of them were subconscious. And yeah. that was what was so fascinating about this whole process. And being that I remember being in a place, I did not break free until my late thirties. So you, you're ahead of me, dear one. I was going to say, it was late thirties as well. <laughs> I, I mean, I did it not break free. And, and I went through such a painful time of, of literally losing everything in my life. I mean, I ended up uh, bankrupt professionally and personally. I ended up losing my marriage. I ended up losing everything that I thought was important in life. And I had worked hard, like I was told to do. Mm -hmm. I did what I committed to do. And I simply was too naive, too trusting. And I believed everybody else's opinions were more important than my own. Does that resonate? Absolutely. <laughs> People and so it took me losing everything to finally say, okay, obviously I'm not doing this too well. <laughs> so I, I had nowhere to go but up. Um, you know, I share that story in the book because I almost took my life. And I know I'm not the only one out there that has reached that level of desperation. Absolutely. And we end up being very alone in that darkness. 
And what happens is you sink darker and darker and darker to the point where you can no longer see any light. And I remember almost not making it. And the only thing that kept me through that time, because at that point in time, I had even lost my faith in the divine. I was, I was mad at the world. And I had a daughter. And my daughter was uh, 11 years old then. And I remember being so close. And at that moment, I don't even know what stopped me today. Um, but that moment, I was like, I don't want her life. I'm going to do whatever I have to do to change the direction of her life. Because I come from a long line of crazy on both sides of my parents. <laughs> that sound familiar? I know I'm not alone in that one. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> I come from a long line of crazy. And, and so I was like, I can't keep, pa- I can't pass this stuff down. Yeah. There's something so, so off about the way we were thinking. And so I literally spent the rest of that time saying, how do I rewire the way I think so that I could pass along healthy thinking to my daughter? Wow. Does that resonate? Yes, absolutely. How do you rewire the way you think so you so you don't have to pass it on? Right, Very right. Powerful. Because there's actually, you know, when we think yeah. about it, there are only two ways to operate in this world. There's either you can either be a victor or you can be a victim, and and the world is built to create victims. Absolutely. So uh, so so that's something that you really mentioned in your book as well, talking yeah. about victimhood. And so the goal is to move from victim. So before we even get into victim, moving from victimhood to victory, it's so easy because I went through that phase as well, where I blamed everybody, but (laughs) it was everybody. It was was my parents. It was the environment. It was my teachers. It was, it was everybody, but. It was society. It was the expectations. It was growing up on the the wrong side of the tracks. I'm with you. Yeah. (laughs) It's yeah. never within the, the focus was never with me within. It was always, this is, I always had a reason for why life, life was happening to me. So life wasn't happening for me. Life was happening to me and life was being unfair. And I think that's probably one of the real, the starting points for anyone who's really trying to rewrite the narrative, to really take control, to get rid of all these mental models, stop blaming other people. So how do people change that focus from external to internal? You know, I'm a big believer that we come here in life to learn lessons about how do we claim that power. I'm a big believer in sovereignty over a self. And, you know, and my acronym was as HOPE, um, which actually stands for Harness Our Power Every Day. Beautiful. And, and, and that shift, because what happens is if we keep blaming everybody else, we are investing all of that time and that effort and that energy in that glass that's called them, them and they. And there will always be a them and they. And what I began to realize is that I only woke up with so much energy in my cup every day. Did I pour it into they and them, or did I pour it into my future self? And that, to me, was the shift, is that I'm going to stop wasting my energy. I can't do anything with them. They're going to do what they do. And this was before we living in 2020 and 2021. Mm-hmm. I mean, heaven help us all at this point. They're, they're let the world do what it does. Instead, what am I going to invest into my future self? the future version of myself that is not yet realized. And that's what I found was there was a choice. I could either spend my energy and efforts on them or on my future self. And it it really came down to figuring out where I wanted to invest my emotional bandwidth. Does that resonate, Joan? Absolutely. And I think that's because for a lot of people, they struggle with, you know, why should I focus on myself? But they're doing this to me. But so I love what you said. They, them will always be there always. So the question is, where do you want to focus your energy? Because really you only have so much. So if you focus all your energy and time on them, they did this, they're not doing this. Why can't they be more like this? If they change, maybe my life will be better. How about you just focus on you? I love it. Well, and it's a challenge. So I'm not going to ignore the emotion comes with it. I mean, many of us are living through that now. I've had my own family situations this year where I had to be reminded of this lesson, you know, um, being left out of a family event because I have a different opinion from somebody else, um, being kicked out of something. Um, we're all living through this the extremes. If we don't walk the line right now, people are feeling very, um, very self-serving and they can cut you off at the knees yeah. and our emotional bandwidth can be sucked into that. It's hurtful. It's, it's difficult, but again, I'm reminded, okay, so what do I do? I, I shift, I literally shift my focus to mm-hmm. that future self and saying, what can I do and, and where am I going to take myself? And the, uh, we, whatever we focus on grows. Absolutely. 
whatever you focus on grows. Absolutely. Really? Okay. So, so back to victimhood to victory. <laughs> sure. Go right ahead. You, you lead me wherever you want to go. Sweetie. <laughs> like so much. I, I want to ask you about the entire book. So I'm just picking my, my favorite topics and then we'll get into some other ones as sure. well. Um, so how, so victimhood to victory. So that's similar to just what we're talking about, but yes. how would you describe victimhood? Um, victimhood. Cause, when, cause when you say to people, you're at your, you're acting like a victim. No, I'm not a victim. I'm not acting like a, I'm acting like a victim. People get very defensive about the word, the term victimhood. I know they do. It's a trigger word, isn't it? Um, <laughs> we don't like it uh, because um, of the way society has actually uh, manipulated us into seeing it. Victimhood is giving anyone else your power other than you. So it doesn't matter if that was your parents or your grandparents. It doesn't matter if it was society, if it was the economics. Um, it doesn't matter if we didn't grow up with, you know, I remember facing not being able to go to college at a certain point because there was just simply no money. There was no money. And, and, and if it had not been for my hearing impairment, oddly enough, I wore two hearing aids for most of my life, um, finding some aid that actually supported hearing impaired people are part of what I was able to stay in college. And so victimhood, just, just sit down with the word, go into relationship with the word. Why does it make you angry? Hmm. What is it that everybody else has been telling you? And, and just face it, write it on the mirror if you have to, and, and say, all right, Get, get real with it and then write victory on the mirror if you have to. You know, that was part of why I don't think it's as easy, Joan, as doing it as a light switch on and off. You know, in the book, I talk about the sisters. You know, I talk about the sisterhood of seven and I talk about these beliefs because I believe that you and I are of the generation where we have one foot in the past and one foot in the future. And we're straddling this very difficult place right now called the present. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's as easy for us just to say, stop thinking that way. What I believe is that we can acknowledge, you know, what those beliefs are and then say, treat them almost like sisters, like family. They're going to be with us for a while. How do we bring out the best of our sisters? And when do we, what do we do when we acknowledge the worst of our sisters? Hmm. Love it. <laughs> okay. So I also like what you said. If, if the word triggers you, then maybe just sit with it and see what is it about it that is triggering me? Why do I feel hateful towards this word what is it about my past that I haven't come to terms with because a lot of times it's easy to just keep going on with life and just sweeping everything under the carpet and you know just going on at some point to really take control you need to come to grips with this is my life this is what's going on these are the mental models this is what's happened to me this is what I can control this is what I can control this is who I've given control of power to now I want to take it back you really have well, to Point. Absolutely. And so, you know, even with the issue of money, so there I was, I had nothing, nothing. I mean, literally, like, I, I was facing homelessness for a while. I, um, I had all the money to take it out of my checking account. I mean, I literally had to get help with food for a while. So this is how difficult, I mean, and I was very transparent when I talked about that in the book. And that was not easy for me, because we don't like to be vulnerable. Um, I actually had put a number of those stories in the far back of the book. And my editor was like, no, they're being moved up. <laughs> they're being moved up, sister. So <laughs> you're talking about vulnerability. You better walk your own stuff, right? Yeah. And, and what happens is we don't like to acknowledge the feelings of it. Mm -hmm. And so if that word's triggering us, then dive into the feelings. Cry, stomp, be angry, be frustrated, allow ourselves to go there. Because what happens for many of us is that we keep pushing it down. And then those push down feelings manifest as health problems. Um, they manifest in other ways that come out in our relationships. Um, they manifest. Feelings are a dashboard to what's going on inside. Mm. It's mm. like an indicator, the dashboard of our car. We almost need like a little dashboard for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Not doing well, change the oil. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, attitude is out of alignment. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if we could just plug in each day and had our little dashboard pop up? <laughs> I know, life would be so much easier. <laughs> it would, it would. <laughs> I think so. Absolutely. Okay, so, so, so the goal is to get people to move from a state of victim being a victim victimhood to victory like really taking yes. charge and control of your life sure so so for me when I got on this journey of really trying to be who I am because I because at some point I woke up and I was like okay I don't think I'm really being my authentic self or being all that I was created to be there's got to be more and you know I started to work on myself started to make some progress I'll see some progress and then 
came the glass ceiling. So, you know, I, I, I got to the point where I was like, okay, definitely there's no way. So it's, again, now I know it was just part of all the belief system and all the conditioning and all that. But I do know a lot of people and I do coach a lot of people who, for them, that glass ceiling still exists. Sure. And it's like, uh, no, Joan, you don't know. You don't understand. You know, it's not possible. It's never been right. done. I know somebody who's tried it and didn't work for them. And it's there. So I, want, I really want to speak to people who are currently in that state where, okay, yeah, I've started to take back control of my life. I'm starting to see some progress. And then boom, the glass ceiling. What do we do with it? I love what you said in your book. The glass ceiling can be a mirror. It's also a mirror. It's also yes. a mirror, yes. And, you can- um, and that was because that was what I came up to too as well in my corporate space. I was hearing this from women all the time. But what I found, Joan, is that it was... It was because, partly because of their language. It was some of these unspoken beliefs that I talk about in the book, and I'll talk about this little downloadable piece. Um, but it was also because they weren't able to articulate their value or understand investing in their brand because they had been so busy investing in others. So, for example, um, there were seven belief systems that I found that I talk about in the book. One of them was um, I have to meet all demands. Okay, I call her the sister Renee because I made these very personable. And the reality was, is we, these women, as women, we're doing for everybody else and we weren't investing in ourselves. And so when I literally started to take women through these models, here's the difference about the glass ceiling. I started to see women shift their salary packages um, and increase them by 30%. 51%, 66%. And then I went, oh my. Okay, so yes, the glass ceiling has existed, and it's also a mirror. It is as much what's going on with our collective, our individual thought processes, which are driven by the collective, okay, driven by generations. I'm not, I'm not denying that under any circumstances, but literally, I began to take these women and say, hold up their belief system and say, did you know this was going on? And they were like, no, and I'm like, uh, yeah, and when I watched the real results, Joan, when I was watching the dollars increase, that's when I knew that we could shift. And I actually believe that even the term glass ceiling, the language that we have been handed, this narrative that we keep being told, I'm not denying it exists, but how many times Mm. do we have to hear about the glass ceiling? How many times (laughs) do we have to hear about the pay? I mean, I don't know about you, but I started to become exhausted hearing all the things that were stacked against us, really? So I said, I said, no more. So that's when I started really shifting to changing my narrative. I mean, so there I was with nothing, starting over by myself, single, how do I do this? And I started my my own business and I started to write the life that I wanted and I needed to change my relationship with money. I worked on changing every one of these beliefs that were there. And I stepped into this zone of freedom, Joan, as you have also discovered. And when you step into that zone, you, you find this place. You're like, Oh, we've got to tell everybody. Yes. (laughs) Yes. You almost become compelled that you can't keep quiet because you want others to have that freedom as well. Absolutely. Freedom. The other side of fear, freedom. So, yeah, so, 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 so I do agree with you, the glass, and again, I'm exhausted hearing it, and (laughs) (laughs) it's just, it's the number one excuse for a lot, or reason, it's not called excuse, for for a lot of women in, especially corporate America, it's like, oh, no, it's a man's world, no, men, women cannot, men, the same thing over and over again, so I do encourage all of you, because I've read the book, the book is amazing, if you really want to understand how to shatter the glass ceiling and really move on. Look at the numbers he was talking about, 30% pay increase, 51%, 60, I could do with a 66% increase. Hey, Um, if you really want to start seeing those kind of shifts and those numbers, then there has to be a shift. There has to be a shift. And it's all about what's going on inside of you. What are your values? what What are the belief systems that are going on? You need to start working on those. Well, and it happens in the micro moment. So I want to be really clear. So please understand that my passion is a global sisterhood. So I was working with with women from all over the world, all races, all religions, all ages. And, And I have a profound, deep respect 
for us as a global sisterhood, because I genuinely began to realize that those countries that did have a little bit more freedom, it was imperative that women in those countries begin to claim that freedom so that we could begin to have that momentum shift so it could begin to shift around the world. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I will, I will never forget, this is one of my favorite moments. I was um, teaching in Dubai. It was the very first time I'd ever spoken to a group of, sh of sheiks in my audience. Um, we had 600 people in the audience. And um, right after I spoke, I went upstairs and I remember, remember walking down the hallway and I saw a woman there in Dubai. She was, oh, she was stunning, stunning Joan. She was tall. Her shoulders were back. She had on this gorgeous ivory hijab. Um, it was delicately um, embroidered with gold on the edges and on the edges of her outfit. And it was just she and I. So she walked towards me and I walked towards her. I couldn't help my American self. And I said, <laughs> I said, forgive me, but you are absolutely stunning. I mean, her, her complexion was flawless. And she looked at me and she said, I just was just thinking the same thing about you. And then I couldn't help myself. There's an American, there's my American self coming out again. And then I went, your eyelashes are like amazing. They were so long. Mm -hmm. And she said, it took me forever to learn how to put them on. Aren't they fabulous? <laughs> okay. So I kid you not. So there for two solid minutes, this woman and I, one from the West, one from the East, completely opposite worlds, sat there and talked as only sisters would. And then we both had this like moment of realization that we had just crossed over this barrier, right? And we, you know, nodded mm -hmm. and thanked each other and went on. Well, the story didn't end there um, because then an hour and a half later, I was in the lobby waiting for a colleague and I see this very same woman. Except this time she was walking beside, obviously, a female family member, either her mother or her grandmother, in a full burqa. You could only see the eyes. Yeah. And this time, the woman I had seen walking so elegantly before, she was walking with her head down, looking at her hands and shuffling one step at a time beside that female family member. And I remember thinking, ah, you too, sweet sister, are trying to figure out the, the shift between the past and the future. And I never forgot that moment. I'm genuinely hoping I run into her someday. <laughs> and um, it, it just reiterated to me the importance of how we're all linked. It doesn't matter which country we're from. In fact, in the back of the book, I had a message for sisters from different countries from around the world from what I had learned from them, because I don't want women anywhere to underestimate how important they are to the larger story. That is true. Beautiful. Awesome. Because I'm, I'm originally from Nigeria and you did have some some mention of some women, some powerful women who've done great things in the book. So, yes, you did yes. almost every single country. Um, so that was pretty cool. So thank you for that. And, and I also feel that as well. I also feel the need to share, to want to help, to reach out, because I do know that we do have some higher level of freedom here. And, you know, yes. for as much as we can give and share and empower and encourage and enable our sisters all over the world. I think even, you know, just having someone to be able to spend that two minutes. So she had two minutes of freedom with you. That must have meant right. to her to, to be with someone who actually sees her. Well, and to see a woman who was there also without the hijab, and so I respect anybody's right to wear that, but to see the difference in cultures and to see that a woman is actually speaking to the men in that culture. So each time that we're interacting, we forget as society just how interdependent we all are. You know, we like to think that it's just our actions, but when, you know, when your energy shifts and you step into your freedom, when my energy shifts and I step into my freedom, when we pass that along to our sons and our daughters, when we pass that along to our friends or women we mentor, um, what we do is we enhance the consciousness of all. Absolutely. And, and that's where it begins to ripple across the cosmic ocean. Exactly. Absolutely. And, and that's why the work you're doing is so phenomenal because you're in the United States, but you have all these groups all over the world. You're, you're speaking mm. to so many people and it's, it's just that ripple effect. So you can't do it alone, but you're building a sisterhood of women all over the world, all working towards the same vision, the same cause, you know, trying to empower ourselves, ourselves and really bring out that power within women so that we can really, really be the best that we can be. 
Weapon. Well, and I genuinely believe that we're playing a big role in the healing of society. I mean, mm-hmm. just based on what we lived through over the past 18 months, let's be real for just a minute. Based on the past 18 months, we have watched a lack of integrity among so many systems, countries, and organizations. And we are reaching, I believe, a tipping point in society that I believe that when women are in the room, they are in the room to heal the room. They are in the room to heal the room. And I believe that women actually hold true to them this this beautiful power, I believe, as we enter into the divine feminine. Um, And I'm not going all woo-woo. I'm only only a one-woo girl, okay? So I don't want anybody to get all all worried on me um, because I'm very much into keeping a balance between these things. But I genuinely believe that women have that ability because when you work with a woman who has done the work and you are in the room with a woman who claims that freedom, she doesn't even have to speak a word. Her simply breathing begins to change the way things are. Wow. But that is true. I I, I agree. Women do. And I agree. Women do. When they're in the room, they're there to heal. Because I see that, you know, all the male energy, the masculinity, everyone's trying to you know, be on top of the other person and with a woman there. Cause I usually see that a lot. I mean, techn- I work in technology and it's, <laughs> it's a Don't lot of men in the room. <laughs> so let's not get started. <laughs> but, but I agree, like when I'm in the room and I never really paid attention to it, but that's what it always feels like, you know, like I'm just the calm within the storm and just there to, okay, so let's all calm down one at a time. Let's make sure everybody's heard. No one has to be, you know, bossed over the other person. So I think, yes, women do have a special power within us. And most times we don't even know we do. We don't even know how to use it. We, we're just there. And I think one thing you just said is, you know, in the last 18 months or so, we've seen a lot of, yeah, going on with all our leaders and all. And, and I, I agree, there's really something about women. I think naturally, and I, I don't know if it's natural or not, but I feel like women who've done the work as well, like you said, have a lot of integrity. And I think integrity does have a role, a big role to play in the future. So I, what believe, are you- I believe integrity is the new gold. Okay, tell me more about that. <laughs> Uh, you know, gold is as far back in history has been known as a precious resource. Um, we know how how valuable gold is, and I believe we're stepping into a time where we're going to start understanding that integrity is the new gold. And, and people who have integrity are the ones who are aligned. Because what happened in the past, Joan, is that we we were trained to be one person at home and one person at work. Yes. And, and what's <laughs> happening is that we're aligning because that's too much. That's too exhausting. We can't be two different people. Yeah, yeah, we can. We are here, manifest in this form, to be here to to bring um, our guests to the world, and that is someone who is actually, um, you know, they're in that alignment, and they cannot help but have integrity. And and that this notion that we can be two different people has led us to live life almost in a split personality. You know, whether it's tech, I mean, twenty four different industries. I've had a front row seat with the good that comes with with these industries Mm -hmm. and the challenging Mm -hmm. and it's taking a quite a bit of courage on my part to start being vulnerable enough and real enough to tap into my courage to say no more folks you know i am no longer going to be a party to the psychopathic tendencies that corporations around the world have had jones going kim we can't talk about that (laughs) But that's what that's what's that is, happening. Yeah, that's, that's what's happening, happening Joan. Um, I want to be really real. What was so startling to me, okay, so I'm not going to go all political, so don't worry. But what was so startling to me is that we as a society, somehow through our healthcare leaders, thought it was okay and humane for people to die without their family over the past 18 months. Oh, yeah. yeah. That is unacceptable. I have all kinds of people that try to give me all the reasons that is not human. And, and every industry right now, we need to take a really hard look about what we all have accepted as normal. You know, when you look up the word psychopathic, it means two things. It means having um, no empathy for another Mm -hmm. and no remorse for your actions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've both seen those action, those decisions play out in a number of corporations. And we have all almost become immune to just how inhumane they are. Yeah. I was stunned 
at, at what we've all accepted as normal. And I, and for myself, and I know many like you and others are finally saying no more. Yeah. You know, when we're watching certain systems crumble right now, the good news is other systems are going to be birthed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the systems that are not going to be a match for the vibration of what we're going through in humanity to a shift that is going to be for the good of all, they're not going to survive. It's that simple. They're not going to survive. And, and, and it's really important. I believe women can lead the way, but I want to be real careful, Joan, and I promise I'll, I shall hand it back to you. I want us to be real careful that one of the lessons that I had to learn was to also respect the divine masculine as well. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up very scared of men. I'm going to be honest with you. I was scared of their power. I was scared of their words. I was scared of how controlling. Um, I was scared of how they would shut us down. Yes. It was not until I figured out how to step into the fullness of who I was, that I could show up in the room with them as a complete equal and the dynamic shifted. Was that your experience? Absolutely. Uh, because men, men can sense energy more, I think more than women can. And I think when you're in awe or you're scared of a man, he knows. Yes. So it's easy to dominate you because you're, you're already down there. But when yeah. you shift your energy and you become equals, they also know and they respect you. Absolutely. And, and what's happened is that we cannot, we cannot receive any more respect that we don't give to ourselves. Uh, spot on. Yep. We cannot, we cannot um, receive any more love than we're willing to give ourselves. Um, I mean, so this is where when you first reached out to me by email, girl, I was like, all right, this is my girl because I could just <laughs> feel your light radiate through the email. And I knew, and I had, and when I checked out what all you were doing, I was just so impressed at the light you're bringing to the world and the leadership that you're providing. So I just simply want to say thank you. Um, it is my honor to be here with you. Uh, I'm so honored to have you. Thank you so much, Kim. Okay. So uh, that's amazing stuff. But integrity is something I think for that's one of my number one values. Like if you don't have integrity, there's really nothing for us to talk about. I, I really don't want to work with you. I don't want to be around you. Sure. And it doesn't matter if you're my family member or not. You know, I'm just not going to, I just can't deal. I think I've gotten to the point where, you know, enough is enough. I can say, I can simply say, no, I don't need that in my life. Right. Um, but like you said, I do agree the world we're now in this place where we've accepted all manner of craziness. <laughs> like every, we've seen it all. And the last 18 months, I think, has really proven mm -hmm. how down, how low humanity has gone. But like you, I also believe that there's a shift that's coming yes. and only yes. those who are in alignment are going to survive. We can't keep going on the way we are. It's, it's not going to work. It's not, it's not, it hasn't worked. It's not working. And there's going to be a tipping point and only those who are in alignment are going to survive. So now, I believe that's positive though. So Joe, no, no, in a good way, of course, in a I good really, way. I want to make that clear to everybody. So yeah, no, people about, gonna die. <laughs> we don't want to die. <laughs> when we survive, I want to make sure, we, you know, that we're all going to, that we genuinely believe we, we all have the availability to make that shift Absolutely. because we are actually living through one of the most important times in humanity from the past 2000 years. It's exciting. If you, if you look hard enough, because it's right now, everyone's yeah, I was going to say, uh, excited. Uh, right now, you're just like, please, please keep me away from human beings. I get it. I get it. I'm with you. <laughs> um, you know, this past year and a half was really difficult um, for me personally, because um, as a hearing impaired person, I read lips. And having to walk through the world in a mass world, I, I could not function. I mean, I literally, for the first year, I, I could not be out in public. I could not... If I didn't have someone with me, I could not, even with my hearing aids, my brain is so trained with the lips that I might be able to catch one word, but it was um, a very, very quiet world. And, um, you know, this is what we're all visiting right now is the vulnerabilities that we've wanted to run away from. Yes. Wow. So, oh my God. Wow. So, so that just reminds me of a lot of uh, people I've seen, I've worked with, I've coached, um, they look at things like that as their, not it's their truth, but they feel like that has de defined who they can be, how far they can go. Okay. So you just said, you know, for the first one year, it wasn't, but you didn't give up. You didn't say, okay, I'm finished. You know, my career is dependent on me speaking and being able to talk to people. So since that's no longer possible, I quit. I give up. You didn't. 
No, I didn't. You know, it's fascinating. So in all fairness, um, uh, Friday, March 13th, 2020, okay. um, I knew something was terribly wrong. All the hair on my arm raised, and I knew we were entering into a time in humanity that was going to be very challenging. My entire year was canceled within 10, in 10 days. 10 days, my career, my everything was canceled. And so like many of us, for a few months there, we're all going, trying to figure out, uh, ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. <laughs> <laughs> How many closets can I clean? Right. And um, and I generally had to, to reevaluate a lot of things as many people did. I, I recognize that. Yeah. And slowly things started to come back in August. And interestingly enough, by the end of the year, for the first time in my life, I wasn't traveling. I mean, I had traveled two or three weeks a month for decades. And I now have had one airplane trip in the past 18 months. So, but what I did though, here's what was interesting is I was doing all the Zoom meetings and, and that can get boring at a certain point too. What I had a colleague work with me is I created a fabulous studio. So I'm not in there at the moment, but I have a fabulous teaching studio. I have four cameras. I have four screens. I created a blackboard where I had now artists come in and do all kinds of drawings. I created a creative lab. Wow. So that I could have fun again. Hmm. Wow. That I can see. Remember, I can't do anything about the rest of the world right no, now. No. The world's going to do what it does. When I go back to this, how do I find my power? I shifted my focus and I said, how do I bring joy so that I am living that joy from the inside out? And that's what the lab did. I have so many screens now and backgrounds and things. And I have been having like way too much fun. Like, <laughs> I'm, not, like I'm not allowed to order any more anything else from overstock.com. Um, but but the, the point was, is it generated a brand new avenue of creativity. Mm. And so for any of us right now, and I know that some of the, some of the people that are listening to your, your, your podcast might be saying, you know, life as I knew it was over. Um, and I would say it means that there's a new beginning for you. There's a new beginning. You just have to look, look for it. You know, there's uh, nothing I, to I would say look and allow. I bet, I bet. And allow. Yes. I love that. Seated. Look and allow. It's seated in your heart already. It's there. It's there. We just were too busy and haven't listened to it for a long time. Yeah. And then and, and that's, that's the pro busy world. So this time, like, even for me, I had to change a lot of things. And I think, you know, for the first few months, it was like, woohoo, party time, you know, there's nothing to do. Hey, just watch all binge watch everything on TV. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then at some point it was like, okay, so maybe this actually means I have time to think. Now I can think of new ways, new things to do. Like I only started doing this during the pandemic. So it's, what else can I do? Really shift that focus to what can I do? The world is going to be the world. Things are going to happen. People are going to do what they do. What can you do? What do you have the power to do? Don't get stuck in the, but there's COVID, but there's a pandemic. Yeah, we know there's a pandemic. We're all aware. You know, there are some people, I'm experiencing the most successful year I've ever had in the history of my life. Um, I'm watching others experience um, some of the most successful years that they've ever had. You know, it's interesting. You said something about television. One of the decisions I made back during 2009, when my life was blown apart, was I stopped watching television. What I, um, I, I don't watch any more than an hour every week. Okay. Ever since 2009, I haven't watched the television news. I, I will tune in 20 minutes a day just to make sure I'm stay relevant. Right. Mm -hmm. But what I learned back then is I was in such a dark place that everything on the news was making me even more sad. And I needed to be very careful about where I had my attention. And then as much as I love movies and I love those shows, I was like, why am I living somebody else's life? Why can't I live my own? <laughs> And I started taking all of that time, Joan, and I started writing and I started to do articles and I started to create courses and I started to do all of these things that we say we don't have time for. And I, today, I don't even miss television. Um, I do enjoy a good TikTok dance video or two. So I'll be <laughs> yeah, I profess, okay, I profess to that. Um, but it's a matter of us that's again, where are we giving our emotional bandwidth? I love the fact that you started this during COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm also not a big TV watcher because I used to spend hours on end watching TV. I did too. I know a lot of people who are like, they know all the series that are on. And then you say to them, how about that business you wanted to do? No, but I don't have any time. Okay, but you were going to start the gym, no, but I don't have time. Oh, but I'm too busy. But they know all, they've seen all the series, all the movies. They know who's done what. They, right. They scroll three hours on Instagram. We're not saying don't do those, but, but 
again, where you focus your energy, it grows. So if you're focusing all your time watching other people live their lives. Right, right. And it's important for you to ask yourself, what is your intention behind it? So like if I sit down and I enjoy a show, like when I do need to veg out, mine is say yes to the dress. I have no idea why. I like dresses. Okay, it's not the wedding. It's I like the fashion, right? So and I, I don't think I literally stop thinking. But um, if I my intention is to just simply give myself a break, that's one thing. Mm. If my intention is to run away from the life that beckoning to me, that's something else entirely. Exactly. That makes sense? Yes. Because you, you do get lost in that. Like people, I've, I've known people who could scroll through Instagram for three hours. At that point, you're completely lost. You're not even thinking. You're just like, da, 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 mindlessly scrolling through for three hours. Well, and it's because those things are designed. There's a, a great little yellow book called um, How to Break Up With Your Phone. Let me grab it right quick. Uh, How to Break Up With Your Phone. Not sure I want to break, I'm not sure I want to break up with my phone, but okay. <laughs> yeah, all right. So here's the thing. What we forget, this little yellow book, How to Break Up With Your Phone by a woman named Catherine Price. Teeny little book. Okay. She knows that someone who's addicted to their phone is not going to read a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I bring this up though, because I ended up giving this book to everybody, um, friends and family, because it explains to us why we're addicted to our phone. It explains to us why we're on Instagram for three hours. These things were designed this way. So when we understand that, that our time and attention has been hijacked purposely, yeah. I'm not saying throw away your phone. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that when you begin to understand the science behind it, all of a sudden you go, okay. Am I allowing this to live my life or is, am I living my life? Mm -hmm. And so I love this little book because I think it really gives you awareness to say, well, I'll be darned. I didn't know someone was, was hijacking my attention <laughs> that way. Whoa. Okay. okay. You know, so ask Thank yourself. You. So people, you know, people should really be, be honest with yourself. How much time are you spending on social media or watching TV that you could be spending creating and building the life that you want? Everyone in this world has 24 hours a day. Like nobody has more hours than you do, but it's what they choose to do with those 24 hours that really counts. And the same happened for this pandemic. Some people are still busy. Like my mother, you know, she's retired now, but she spends 10 to 15 hours and she's going to be listening to them there watching the news. And I'm like, you yeah. watch the news 10 to 15 hours every day, every day, seven days a week. I'm like, no, that, that's time you could be using to do something else. You know, if there's other dreams that you have or things you want to do, Put two hours into that, put three hours and see, you would see with, within a short period of time what you've been able to accomplish. This is like, oh, I don't have any time, well, you know. Well, I mean, when you think about television, T-E-L-E dash vision, V-I-S-I-O-N, tell a vision. Somebody else is telling you a vision of what your life should be like. I love that. So, Never, heard so that let's, Never let's, heard that before. Let's be real. Let's, so let's be real. So, so this is part of when we talk about sovereignty over self, which is the genesis of the whole book. I mean, part of why I called it your lion inside is because I found why were women acting small like a cat when we have the strength of a lion inside? Okay, so that was the thing. We are so often acting small because we think we don't have power. Uh, since the 1950s, we've had the world telling us a vision of what the world was like. When I finally unplugged from that world, Joan, because I had to from where I was in my life, I discovered a whole beautiful life that I've now co-authored a book and I've published a book. I have another book coming. I've created all of these things because then I stepped into a space of becoming a creator. I was creating my life. I was creating experiences. I was creating a new direction and I was creating a new generational direction for my daughter. We are at our essence designed to be creators. And that's part of why we, we, we crave things that are so different because we, we like things, we like that creation. And what I would say is instead of watching TV, why don't you write a script instead of, instead of, uh, um, instead of, you know, investing in the news, why don't you ask yourself each day, what's my news going to be? Hmm. what's Jones call letters going to be? Yeah. Uh, what's my news broadcast today? Well, I'm waking up with a little bit of sunshine here yeah. today. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, today, even though I know it was a little stormy yesterday, today, my broadcast is going to be sunshine with yeah. a dash of a sunset at the end. Um, mm -hmm. That's going to be dynamite and take my breath away. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, absolutely. 
Wow. It's on, which, it's on which syllable are we going to place the emphasis? And, and I'm saying that tongue in cheek because we all know that when you speak different languages, it's syllable, syllable. It's that tiny of a difference, Joan. That's what, even in the book, when at the end of each chapter with the sisters, I got down to what are the words that people say when they're dancing in the red zone, you know, with, the, with an old belief system? What are the energy behind when you're dancing in the new system? Mm -hmm. This awareness is beckoning to us all. And for me, that's just an incredibly exciting place. It is. Wow. So the, the book really talks about going from the, the red zone to the green zone. Yes. Though beliefs to the new beliefs that you need to be creating for yourself honestly I we, I loved the book and even though I've gone through a lot of healing I've gone through a lot of growth I still found that there were things in the book and I was like oh should I still do that that's still me that's still resonant why Joan I thought you were grown I know, <laughs> I like, okay, I know. Okay. then I consoled myself and said but it's a journey but it, it is a journey <laughs> I mean, it is because we, you know, it was funny because I talk about my Italian mother-in-law in the book and she was, she lived with us for two years when um, I got remarried. She was born in 1916. She just passed away in April of 2020. Okay. So mm -hmm. she lived to 104. We are not going to have all this fixed in one generation. Mm -mm. one generation so um i just want to mention to so you can go to your lion inside and download this little this what i call the inspiration guide mm -hmm. and I, I knew it was important for me to be able to put the whole book on one page because even if i had sisters in other countries that could not afford the book i wanted them to be able to have access to it okay, very important to me that that this was not something that was about um dollars it was about shifting generations across countries and so what i did is i found out that what i said is that seven sisters live here in the red zone okay this is the red zone like a stoplight where you want to stop and be aware of what we did testing this out with women is we rewrote it to the yellow zone this is where you want to slowly move into your power and then the green zone like just like the go on a stoplight the green zone is where we want to go mm -hmm. And all on one page. Now, I will be honest with you. Sometimes I find that when sisters figure out, when women say, you mean this is how I'm still, <laughs> I never even knew. Yeah. I mean, they jump to the green zone that fast. Yeah. Others need to put one toe in the water at a time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I wanted this to be something that they could put in their purse, that they could put in their car. Because when we talk about feeling powerless, I found just about every powerless feeling tap dance somewhere with one of these sisters. And I wanted them to be able to go, all right, why am I feeling this? Because I don't like this feeling. What is it? Mm -hmm. And then to look at it and say, okay, how do I get out? I don't want my type A personalities going, oh, going, oh, I don't want to live there. Oh, that's me. Oh, that's me. <laughs> no, no, no. I want to focus on the green zone. On the green zone. <laughs> on the green zone. And if you want to say affirmations every day, the green yeah. zone is where you want to go. Amazing. So I'm, I'm going to have the link um, put in the show notes so that everyone can go Please. there and download it. It's so good. You can start to see your life shift from the red to the green. Uh, and like Kim just said, some people just get it straight away. Yeah. Okay, good. But some people, it's, it's a bit of a process. It's a journey. Be like me. It's a it process. Is. It's a journey. It is. You know, listen, I used to tap dance with all seven of the sisters. Now I just hang out with two. That really is a little hard for me to let go. Um, so, you know, so I get it. And then when I see them show up in the red zone, I'm like, come oh, yeah. on, Jalila. I've been there. Girl, we've done this. I know. Right? <laughs> okay. So you also talk about... Um, the importance of a vision in creating a new earth. Can you can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure, sure. You know, um, before the before the news really got into this whole narrative, 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 I talked a lot about the fact that there was this narrative happening with women all over the world that we were taught to believe. Mm -hmm. And when we think about when we go to women's conferences or read women's books, we're always hearing the statistics about the the glass ceiling, um, the pay inequity. I mean, we are constantly facing this. And so if we keep giving power to that vision, that's going to be the vision that continues. What we're being asked when we talk about this kind of new earth, a new direction, mm -hmm. is stop giving power to the old vision that we no longer want. Mm -hmm. Consciously shift and say, what do I want? I want, I want a, a life where I'm not worried about the gender stuff because I'm simply living who I am and it becomes a non-issue. Um, I want a life where abundance is as easy for me as breathing, okay? Uh, I want a life where my sisters all over the world have what they need and have the opportunities that they need. I want a life where we reach the point that men and women 
are supporting and encouraging each other because I am watching a shift with men. I know it's a little hard to see at times, but I am watching. I can't tell you how many executive men have have fallen apart or had tears with me because they are in a safe space Mm. to finally acknowledge the things that they haven't. So I understand that we've lived in this world that sometimes we can give it a bad rap, but this new earth that we're all moving to, it's about us finding a deep and profound respect for both the feminine and the masculine and understanding these two are in tandem. Yes. You know, and I genuinely believe that the masculine and feminine exist in each of us. I, um, I agree. Genuinely, genuinely, you know, <laughs> I, sometimes I, I can feel when I'm too much of my masculine <laughs> self, you know, and, and I'm like, let me see the softer side of Kim. <laughs> let me go put some makeup on and be more feminine. Ah. Let me welcome the softer side of Kim. And I learned, I learned to step more into the feminine. Now, for people who are listening to this, they're saying, Kim, if I show the feminine, then someone might squash me. And you're right. For a long time, that was the case. But the energy is changing. Slowly, daily, the energy starting to shift. And I believe the more that, Joan, the reason I do podcasts like this is I believe the more you and I can just simply, for a little while, folks, let's stop worrying about everybody else Mm. and get yourself to the place that you were living in that fullness. And you will be the one who is creating the new earth because the old earth begins to fall away. Wow. That is phenomenal. Wow. I believe that, Joan. That's what I'm spending all my energy on doing. (laughs) That is so beautiful. Um, we, we all, I, I do agree in the whole, you know, each, each of us have both energies, masculine and feminine energy. Um, and I think that a lot of strong women, so we, people like successful women, oh, you're a strong woman. Um, it's, it's very easy to really fall into the masculine energy and just show up as that. But I, but I, 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 I kind of agree with you. The feminine energy is st- equally as powerful and we really need to step into that. And I think once you come into the fullness of who you are and you're really in alignment with who you're meant to be, I think everything just starts to fall into place. Like there's no need to be, to force yourself to be more masculine or be more feminine or be afraid right. to show your feminine side. You're just, you're just you. And people just see you for you. It's not, oh, she's a female. And I, I really believe that because I used to be seen as a very strong woman, but I've been learning in the last couple of years, especially within my relationship, like really trying to step into the, the feminine energy side of things. And I, and it hasn't made me less powerful. No, you know, if anything, it's more powerful. And that's what's been so interesting to me. You know, I would have never told anybody my story about when I lost everything. Are you kidding me? I branded myself with an F on my forehead and I thought that I would never be okay again. I thought life would never be okay again. And so for anyone that's facing, think they're losing their home, they're losing their job, they're losing their their relationship, they're losing everything. I literally thought at that moment when everything was gone, I was like, it'll never be okay again. It was because of that time that I became the best version of myself. Mm. And it will either bury us or, 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 or will rise with it. And so it took me a long time to figure out how can I share this with people and still be okay with it? Because when I started to share my story, I had people come up and say, Kim, I I can't believe you shared that. That's making me see it differently. And I began to see other people's vulnerability respond to my vulnerability. And then I realized, who am I to hold back from that anymore? Who am I to hold back from it? Like I did the same with my book and even my family, my mother and my sister, they were shocked. They were like, we didn't know you went through all this. You mean this? Right. This happened to you? Like really see? Oh my! Right. Wow. But you know, and I, I also felt very vulnerable. I was scared. Like when I wrote the book, I was like, I was good. But the moment the book was published, I, I went into a panic. I was like, oh my god! Now everybody's gonna know how I felt so many times. You know, people keep seeing me as this super successful person, and now they're gonna read all that I've been through, like all the failures I've had in my life. You know, going through a divorce and all that. It, it, I just felt very naked at that point. And then people started to s- send me messages. Oh my God, you know, your story really, really resonated with me. I'm going through the same thing or I've been through the same thing. Oh my right. God. You, and I'm like, wow. And there I was holding back all this while, trying to hide from who I really am, my true self. So I, I, I do believe that there's power in vulnerability. Like really yes. be, show up as who you are. Everyone's going through something or everyone's been through something. 
show up as your authentic self people will resonate with you more people you would impact yeah. lives when people can see the real you can really see and hear your story and but and it is important to note Joan that that doesn't come without risk so I want to be real I want to be real so it took me to a very important time in my life probably 10 years and then this year learning this lesson my biggest fear years ago was learning to do video and now you know I, I have a Facebook and uh, Facebook page Kimberly Faith Inspires and I was speaking out more and always my biggest fear was if somebody sees something on video it's going to be a problem and I was scared to death and I kept feeling nudged by my own divine team and my own encouragement saying we need video to become as natural as breathing get to it girl you got work to do right so and but sure enough this year my biggest fear came true and once again i was faced with another layer to say how committed are you to being who you are hmm. so i i want to be really clear that that when we step out um not everybody can handle that and learning to be okay with that so just understand that there's layers, you know, Joan has gone through her life and she's in her layers. I've gone through my life and there's layers and I've now learned another layer. And it made me say, how committed are you, Kim? And I had to ask myself that question again. I'm very committed to what it is that I do, I say in the world. There is no other choice. And, and for some of us, when we step into our power, it makes others uncomfortable. A lot of people. <laughs> and, and, and find a way to give them some grace for that. Hmm. You know, wow. I want to be real. I'm, 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 the only thing I can give all of you and, and you, Joan, is that to, I'm never going to ask you for more than I will expect of myself. Mm. And I'm always going to be completely transparent about what's happening. Mm. And um, and may together, may we figure out how we're going to make it through it. Because I'm ready for that new earth, girl. I'm ready <laughs> for that new earth, sister. I, absolutely. I'm ready for that new earth as well. Oh, my God. Okay. So, so I'm sure there's lots of listeners here, you know, women who have all these uh, seven belief systems ruling and controlling their lives and they're hearing these things about you know having a vision for your life stepping into your power really owning your future and controlling your life and you can be all that you were designed to be and they're thinking okay but where how do I start where do I get started how do I harness this feminine power that you all are talking about what will be your short response to that how can you how can you help them uh, to me I would start journaling if I had to pick only one thing I'd start journaling um, and I would start capturing exactly where you are and what you think every day. Um, you don't have to make it so rigid that you're having to do it every day. But journaling for me was conversations with myself and I needed to see it in black and white. And what was fascinating is that as I was journaling and then I would, you know, go read a book that took me to the next level or I would do something that took me to the next level. My favorite activity became to go back and look at where I was a year ago. And I began to see the maturity and my my thought process evolving in that year. So I would start spending some time hmm. under become your own best friend. Look in the mirror and say, all right, girl, you and I've got this. <laughs> yep. Do what I do what we need to do I, I'm, and make a decision, Joan. That's half the battle is make a decision. You know, um, people can certainly connect with me on LinkedIn as well. But um, I have a quote on there. It says your power begins where your fear ends. Absolutely. That and is. fear, fear is usually what the problem. Are we fearful of being successful? Are we fearful of losing something? Are we fearful of not being what everybody else thought we were? And um, to me, it's, it's a stepping through that fear. Hmm. Step through the fear. It's, it's all within you already. There's nothing outside. The power is already within you. So it's stepping into it. And I, I love journaling. I do journal from time to time as well. And I think it's a great way to just get started, to really come to terms with where you are and then where you're going. So that, like you said, you can look back and be like, like I, I look back at one of my journals from two years ago and I was like, wow, is that what you are? Look at you now. <laughs> well, listen, the th things I would say and the things I would be fussing about and the people, oh, yeah. oh my goodness. I almost laugh at myself now, but they were things that needed to be said. And the things I was scared of, and it's funny that you talk about videos because I did have it in my journal that one of my biggest fears was, uh, you know, the imposter syndrome, people laughing at me trying to do a video. And, and, <laughs> and it's so funny because I'm like, oh, I'm scared of doing videos. I'm scared of putting myself out there. Of, you know, and I'm, today I'm laughing. I'm like, what? You were scared? Look at you. Um, but, but we all have these fears. That's the truth. We all have these fears. Uh, yeah, honest to goodness, if you go to my website, KimberlyFaith.com, you'll see a video there at the homepage. 
I cried on the way to do that video. I was so scared. I was shaking. I had to have my makeup redone. I mean, people look at it and they go, oh, it was so good. And I'm like, I was, I was about to throw up. I, I'm just going to be really honest with you. I was out of my mind and um, fear. And, and so don't be surprised by that. Mm -hmm. Everybody who you find finds a way to freedom, found a way to push through that fear. And so Absolutely. it happens in the micro moments. We make these decisions in the smallest of moments. So don't make it, don't go for the whole hill. Just go to the next few steps. Because if you look how far you have to go, you might not keep going. I quit. <laughs> All right, nope, nope, nope. I'm, there. I'm, I'm good where I am. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I can see you. Yeah. I've been there, done that. Just keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So take baby steps, tiny steps. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't let the, the, the big mountain overwhelm you. Just take one step at a time and just start. face your fear and just get over it. Just do it anyway. Do it fearful. I mean, I had to really work on that self-talk. I had to, you know, part of why I came up with this is I literally had to carry around index cards that every time the negative self-talk would start to drown me, I had to pull these out and start to repeat them. Joan, that's how I was. So I told you I came from a long line of crazy on both sides. I had to literally reread these things to me to, to, to turn my thinking around because it was a self-talk that was stopping. It me. is the self-talk that stops a lot of people. It still stops me till today. It's the self-talk, you know? So, right. so I, I, I love the, the, so index cards. Now we have our phones. There are many apps that you can download, the constant reminders, you know, words of affirmation to help you get through this. But even if all of that, if you're still struggling on your own, then there is the sisterhood. You know, Kimberly is building a team of women all over the world, the sisterhood. Absolutely. And you can tap into that. You don't have to go through this journey alone. I didn't go through it alone and you don't have to. People always feel, oh, no, it's a lonely journey or it's lonely at the top. You know, like we hear all these things that you're feeling, oh, I'll just stay small where I have my, you know, my comfort zone with lots of people and we're all good. No, it doesn't have to be alone. There are people to support you. There sure. Are you grow, like-minded people like yourself who are there to enable you and support you. But be mindful of how much you depend on the tech. I love the tech and I love the fact that we're all able to connect, but I think silence is as important. Um, I genuinely do. What I found is that the answers came to me in silence. That's when I was able to plug into the divine. That's when I was able to plug into my higher self. So tech is great. And are you spending enough time in silence with yourself? And um, to run, for me, nature is my cathedral. Um, are you spending having a balance because what I find is then when we're too plugged into all the tech, we have other things that are telling us what to do and how to do it when in fact your deep your highest self and your mm. heart of hearts and soul knows with a capital K. It's soul knows. It's true. Sit still. Get within yourself and hear from your inner being because the answers right. are all there. The power is in there. It knows what steps you're meant to take. It knows who you truly are. So it's to align with that inner soul that you already have all the powers within you. Can't say it and then please go and down. I'm going to put the link, but go and download that three page where the, the red zone, the amber zone and the green zone. We want to make sure we want to help you get through to this green zone. That is where you're living in the fullness of who you were created and designed to, to be. Women are powerful. I, I saw I saw a meme some time ago that said, the future is female. And I kind of agree with it. The future is female. So we need to start stepping into that power today. We need to start creating a vision and a life for ourselves. We need to believe that we're as equal as anybody else on this planet. And the power is in us to heal, not just our environment, but heal the world as a whole. So what are we doing about it? Let's stop sitting on the sideline and watching life pass you by. Stop allowing old belief systems, you know, to determine and dictate what you become. Take back control of your life today. It is so important. And it doesn't matter how old you are. You know, like some people say, oh, no, but I'm too old. No, 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 you're never too old. You're never too never. old. Never. I'm a glorious 52, although I identify as a 42. Okay. But um, hey, the because <laughs> I'm 42. <laughs> so, so the in the age thing is I'm finding that the age is it just is a beautiful each stage is beautiful. Um, so yeah, we're going to completely I believe in our lifetime see human beings begin to live to 125, 150. Mm -hmm. oh, and right. I believe that we're going to have more health, a brighter future and a very different direction. So for many of us, we're not even halfway yet. We're not even, I agree. Woohoo! <laughs> no, just one woo. <laughs> <laughs> woo, just woo. <laughs> there you go. Amazing. So I know you did mention that you have another book coming up. Um, what's that book about and what else do you have in the pipeline? 
So sure, um, I have lots of things in the pipelines. Um, I, the book, I'm not ready to announce the, the title of it yet because it's a bit in transition. I'm waiting to see what's going to happen with some things that unfold for the rest of this year. But it is about what's happening with the systems that we're believing in and how they need to be rebuilt. Um, and that will be leading the, leading the way. Um, lots of, I have a whole new stack of my affirmation cards that will be coming out. So with that, I have new online courses that'll be coming out in 2022. Um, we're living through significant change though. So what I'll be doing is in response to what the world needs at the time and what that my purpose is there. So I think that's going to be what happens to a lot of us. So I thank you so much, Joan, for giving me the chance to meet with all of you. And for anybody listening, there's not an accident that you're listening to this tonight. Um, so whenever I go into a space like this, I set the container for the highest level of healing and that if you want to release whatever's holding you back, then open your arms and, and say, I, I want to release. And I open my arms and I'm, I want this life that they're talking about because it can't happen unless you claim your free will right to say, okay, I'm ready. And so Joan and I created the container for you. So take in the healing and take in the light and take in the love. And someday maybe our paths will actually cross in person. I'm, I'm, sure, it, I'm sure my path will cross. Yes, because I'm going to be looking for you <laughs> once we can travel freely. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much, Kim. Oh, so many words of wisdom. And I really hope that people do tap into what you just said, you know, that don't just be, a, and then don't just be entertained. I mean, there's a reason why you're listening to this today. Right. So be open because nothing can happen until you're open and willing to receive. It's as simple yeah. as that. Thank you so much, Kimberly, for an amazing time. <laughs> that was Until awesome. Until next time. Thank you so much. All right. So that's all we have for this week's show. I hope you all really enjoyed it. Again, my name is Joan Wosu, and I will see you same time next week on another episode of I Rise Conversations with Joan. <laughs>